Luke's Gospel, at the end of Luke's Gospel, Luke uh, 24, verses 13 to 35. Luke chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. We have the two men on the road to Emmaus. I'm not going to read it out. You remember, don't you? It's, it's, a, it's got four parts to it. These two men who we've never heard of before, they're, they're really disappointed with the death of Jesus. They were expecting Jesus to become some sort of big, big military uh, warrior. And there he is butchered on the Calvary cross. They're scandalized by this. And they say, well, that's it. We're disillusioned. Off we go. And they go off to a place called Emmaus, outside of Jerusalem. And we, then we hear what happens. Jesus, without them recognizing it, he walks beside them and says, what are you talking about? He says, oh, don't go there. We're really upset about it. We've, we've been very, we're, our hope had been, dot, dot, dot. Our hope had been. These are losers. These are people that have given up on the church, given up on Jesus. And that's the sort of talk that they were saying. So they were dragging each other down, doing the very opposite of what we're doing here, building each other up. They were dragging each other down, and down, down, down they went until Jesus said, you foolish men, so slow to believe the good news. And they said, what are you talking about? And he said, don't you? And then he explained the scriptures to them, a little bit like what I'm doing now. Here's Jesus explaining this. This had to happen. Don't you know the scriptures? That the one who was to come would suffer and die, but then he would rise again. And they said, oh, we haven't, uh, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe, maybe we've been thinking it's all about me, it's all about me, rather than it's all about you, it's all about you, as we sang before. So they said, listen, come on, um, we've got some fish curry and rice over here, there's a nice uh, restaurant here, we'll pay. <laughs> so there they were in the eating house and Jesus, they didn't know it was Jesus just yet, but he took the bread, oh, here it is, I'll just read this part out because this is the essential issue here, here it is. When he was at the table with them, here it is everybody, he took bread, he blessed it, he broke it and gave it to them and their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And then he vanished from their sight. Why did he vanish from their sight? Because he was now present in their heart. He didn't have to be there physically anymore because he was present in his spirit within them. It's the same with us now. Jesus is not present with us physically like you and I with each other. He's present with us in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life. That's the presence of Jesus today in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the love relationship between God and the Father. No greater power is there, power 2015. The power there is the power of the love between the Father and the Son given to us what we now call the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Took, blessed, broke, gave. That's mess. That happens at the Eucharist. Took. We take the gifts of bread and wine. There's a procession that comes down. Taking the gifts of bread and wine. Take, bless the Eucharistic prayer. The priest puts his hands over the gifts. There's the epiclesis, the coming down of the Spirit again. Every sacrament, the coming down of the Spirit through the hands. Blesses the Eucharistic prayer, preface. Broke the Lamb of God. Lamb of God. The priest breaks the bread out. Yeah, you can see it. One bread, many pieces. Give, and then forth gives Holy Communion. What happened at, at the Last Supper, what happened at the road to Emmaus, happens every time you go to Mass. We're part of an ancient tradition that started with Jesus and continues in Jesus. We haven't just been given the Mass that floated down a couple of years ago. It's been there when Jesus was there, he gave it to us, his great gift to us. Therefore, we honor the Mass. Jesus is waiting for us at the Mass. Where are you? He's waiting for you. 
He's giving you his body. He's giving you his blood. You can't say, oh, I'm too busy. I'm going to play soccer today. I'm going shopping today. I haven't got time for mass. What? You're keeping Jesus waiting. He's waiting with love and mercy. There's the Eucharist. And in a sense, all the seven sacraments find their home in the Eucharist. It's the mother of the sacraments. So they're the initiation sacraments. Remember, baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist. And then at the end of the men on the road to Emmaus, what did they do? They stood up and they ran back to where they were running away from. They went back to Jerusalem, back to the Calvary Cross. So the priest says at the end, the Mass has ended, go in the peace of Christ to love and serve. Off you go. Missionary sent at the Mass. Just don't, don't, don't go, just leave the church. No, go and be Eucharist to the world. Be the body and blood of Jesus in the world. You have received the body and blood, now be the body and blood of Christ in the world. There's our mission, everybody. That's what evangelization is about. Being the arms, and the legs, the eyes, the mouth, the ears of Jesus to the world. So they're the initiation sacraments. Now, let's have a look at the healing sacraments, all sanctifying us, making us holy in God. I'd like to talk about a sacrament that's often called the uh, forgotten sacrament. It's the confession. How do you call it in, in India? Do you say confession or penance? Confession, yeah. Um, this is sometimes forgotten around the world because people sort of, uh, they say, oh, I'll just forgive myself. But no, no, Jesus has given us this moment where you go to the priest and, and you have contrition, you are sorry, and you confess your sins, the times you've turned your back on God. You think seriously about the sense of sin in you, not because it's, it's only a means to an end so you can experience the sense of forgiveness. And then you, you courageously say without holding anything back, the sins that you know that you've committed. Your God has given you a conscience. And others can help you to work out what to say. The priest might give you a, a quick moment of encouragement, perhaps a bit of advice, and then he'll put his hand out again to you. Here it is again, the epiclesis. Put his hands towards you and give you the absolution prayer of the church. And at the end he'll say, you are forgiven and set free. Go in the peace of Christ. I must say, I've been a priest now for a long time. And the times I feel Jesus has used me most has been in the confessional. Just making myself available to people to come, to speak out their heart, to surrender their life to Jesus and articulate areas where they put a block between Jesus and, and themselves. And then for me to be able to say this wonderful prayer of forgiveness. There's no greater power than being forgiven by Jesus. And I, you can almost see it physically in people. Their backs go up. Their head goes up. There's a dignity, a human dignity restored. And a smile comes on their face, being forgiven by the Lord Jesus. They've got a fresh start. Off they go. Please, everybody. Never think your sin so great that God can't forgive you. Never hold anything back from confessing it. I remember some years ago, I was at a big conference like this, but it was in another part of the world, and uh, the speakers were gathering together, and one of the speakers, who was a, a cardinal from America, he was, he was about uh, 10 hours late. We all gathered in the night. He came in the morning at breakfast time. And there was a plane delay. And he said for about five hours, he was in this little um, room uh, waiting for the plane to get ready, ready for the plane to be ready to be boarded. It was running late and then they had to clean it. And then they had some engine problem and they had to fix it. So there were about several hundred people in the, in the uh, gateway or whatever it's called there before you go onto the plane. And they were all crowded in there. They weren't really able to go out. 
and just near him was a father and a son. And the father bought the son a little puzzle thing that you put together uh, and, uh, to keep him occupied. Well, the, the cardinal said, for about four hours, the boy said, You've got, and then he said, oh, I've, I've messed it up. Can I start again, daddy? Yes, you can start again, son. So he goes for another minute. Oh, I've messed it up, daddy. Can I start again? Yes, you can start again, son. I've messed up. This went on for four hours, and the, the cardinal was saying, stop it. It was about, he wanted to say that, but then he said, no, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. He said to himself, this is like us with Jesus. We're, with our life, we've messed it up. Can I start again, Jesus? Jesus said, yes, you can start again. How many times can I ask forgiveness? 70 times seven. In other words, forever. I am there forever to forgive you. And the cardinal came in, although late and didn't sleep at all, he was radiant. He said, I've really learned something about God in a deeper way through what that father and son said in front of me for four hours as we're all sitting together. Isn't that wonderful? He could have been angry and annoyed about everything, about the plane delay and about being old up there and about this repetition going on, but he could see Jesus in the midst of all that. Jesus speaking to us, using us as, as different ways of coming to people. About uh, Christmas, yes, that's right. Before Christmas last year, um, I went to prison. <laughs> Before Christmas and Easter, I always like to go to the local prison to visit the people that live there. And there I am in Canberra, Australia, and they've got a very big prison there. And I went to the prison with the chaplain, and um, I, I wanted to celebrate Mass, but... Uh, they didn't permit me for certain security reasons. And uh, I, I, I wanted to see as, as many as people as I could. And they said, well, you can't. That area is locked down today. So, Archbishop, uh, you've got to go to solitary confinement. I don't often go to the, 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 the most secure area where the, the hardest of all the criminals are because uh, the, the, uh, the chaplain would go there. But... I've only got a certain amount of time and it takes about 40 minutes to go through all the clearances to get into the um, super, super security part of the prison. But because I couldn't do the other, I said, okay, let's go to the super, the super security. So we had to put the fingers in and get them the fingerprints. Then I had to go in front of a machine to get my eyes photographed. I had to be searched to make sure I had nothing on me that I shouldn't have had. I, they didn't put me into the machine. I had to go out like this to make sure there were no drugs on me. <laughs> then I went through one, two, three, four different lockups, 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 until we went right into the most secure area where the murderers are, <laughs> where, where the ones that have done the most heinous things are imprisoned there. They're locked away. And once we got right into there, they said, just wait here, Archbishop. And then they, got, they unlocked a prison door and then they got the prisoner, three great big uh, um, wardens, the, the security people there, took him to this other room and put him in there. And then they said, you can go into that room now. So I went in there to see this person I'd never met before. And it, he was, there was a, quite a big room, but he was locked up in a special cage at the end of that room. And I was... I had to speak to him through this cage. Uh, I, I asked him, can't, can't you unlock it so that I can talk to him face to face? No, 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 no. That's the only way that people from the outside, including me, could talk to him. A hardened criminal. And so there this man is. I knew he was a Catholic because I could see it on the, uh, the form. I had no idea what sort of Catholic he was. And so there I am on my own with him. And um, you don't ask questions like, what are you in for? <laughs> you don't ask the rather personal question. You just presume he's had something very, very bad that he's done for him to be in such a terrible situation. It was quite inhumane the way I, I've never really spoken to a person like that in a cage before, but it was either that or don't see him at all. So I, I introduced myself to him and he said he had tattoos all over him and all this sort of thing. And he said, you're what? 
I said, uh, I'm the Archbishop coming to, uh, the Catholic Archbishop of Canberra coming to visit you before Christmas. Oh, he said, you're not, you're not an Archbishop. You're, you're the priest or something, are you? I said, yeah, well, I am a priest, but I'm also the Archbishop. What do you mean you're the Archbishop? So I explained, and this big guy, you know, what do you, what do you mean you say you're an Archbishop? And I, and I, so in the end, I had to get out my ID because he just couldn't believe I was an Archbishop. So I, had, I showed him my ID, which is with me dressed up like this. I was in a black suit at the time when I was speaking to him. And he, once he could realise that I was the Archbishop, he softened. So this great big guy who was, at the start, he was saying some terribly naughty words that you don't normally say in front of bishops, swear words. But once he realised I was the real thing, he, he became like a kitten. So the big tiger became a little kitten. And you know what happened to him once he realised? He said, I can't believe that an archbishop would come and see somebody like me. I can't believe it. I'm so, he said, I'm sorry I didn't believe you, but I just can't believe that an archbishop would take the time, and I know it takes a lot of time to get into here, and to come and see a, a, a fool like me. A fool like me. And I said, I've... You have made my day on saying that. I said, at the moment, I couldn't think of anybody I want to be alongside but you. And I really meant it. And he said, I'm a terrible Catholic. And I said, well, I've got a great God who's full of mercy. And he wants to come to you. So I was there for quite some time. And to cut a long story short, in the end, I heard his confession. And I don't think he'd been to confession since he was a little boy. And you know what happened when I put my hands towards him? Unfortunately, because I was in a cage, I couldn't do it the way. But I, there was a little opening about this big. I put my hand in it. And I said, can I put my hand on your head? So I, I went like that and put my I could only have one hand in. And I, I, said, I said the following prayer. God, the Father of mercies, through the death and resurrection of your Son, you have reconciled the world to yourself. Through the ministry of his holy church, may Almighty God have mercy on you and forgive you. And as your bishop in this sacrament, I now forgive you and absolve you from all the sins of your life. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And there was a deep silence. So I just thought, well, there's a godly silence here. I'll keep quiet. So we were very quiet for about a minute. He was closed his eyes, had his head down. And I really felt the presence of Jesus. And you know what happened then? He started crying. He started crying like a baby. Tears rolling down. His, his, all his shoulders. He was heaving when he was crying. This great big man, big muscles. They've got nothing else to do but doing weights. Great big man with big tattoos of all his girlfriends all over the place there. And then he becomes, he receives forgiveness. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that forgave someone like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 We are forgiven by the God of forgiveness who breaks through the stone and gives us tender hearts, the heart of the sacred heart. Let Jesus now, this beautiful image of Jesus behind me, Jesus got his arms out towards you. And I'm going to put my arms. I'm sure the cameraman will get this nicely. I want to have my hands out like this and Jesus' hands behind me. I'm only sort of the instrument of God's peace. But Lord Jesus, I pray for anybody in, the, in this gathering this morning who hasn't been to confession for many, many years. Or even somebody who's been to confession many times but never really said what was really 
the, the sins in their life. I ask you to give them courage, Lord Jesus, to give them an opportunity in the weeks ahead to go to confession. And just like that prisoner in the jail, to be forgiven with the kindness of God, the loving kindness of the heart of our God, who visits us like the dawn from on high. He will give light to those in darkness, to those who dwell in the shadow of death, and guide us into the way of peace. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd love to talk to you more about the sacrament of anointing of the sick, but I suppose many of you have not received that sacrament because this sacrament is for those who are seriously ill. Some of you might have. But it's, again, a moment, the sacrament is a moment where you are most weak, where Jesus comes to you. See, isn't that wonderful? The sacraments are where we're most weak or we're most need of God. The church, in her wisdom, comes with the sacrament. When I'm sick, the church is there with the sacrament. When I'm needing forgiveness, the church is there with the sacraments and the coming down of the Spirit. For my nourishment, the church is there with the Eucharist. For my entry and corporation of the body of Christ, the church is there with baptism and confirmation. And then with holy matrimony, many of you will receive the sacrament, some of you already received it. The church is there to bless your union so it becomes like the Holy Trinity. The two becoming one in Jesus Christ. In a permanent bond that's open to the possibility of children. Wow. Everybody, there's the seven sacraments, sanctifying us, sending out us on mission. The initiation sacraments, baptism, confirmation, Eucharist. The healing sacraments, reconciliation sacrament of, conf uh, of confession. The healing sacrament, anointing of the sick. The vocation sacraments, vocation sacraments, matrimony and holy orders. Jesus never ever distancing himself from us, but coming to us at all times, but particularly at these crucial moments. So I'd like you to think now, what I've just said, how will it affect you in the days ahead? I hope it affects you at Mass tonight. I hope it affects you when you renew your baptismal vows. I hope you, def I hope you want to see that the church gathering around you, the church helping you, the church being one in you, you're not on your own. We're together. So let's just praise God and thank him for the many gifts he's given us, especially the sacramental gifts. We thank you and praise you, Lord Jesus, for all that you've given us. We thank you and praise you, Lord, for the moments of encounter in the sacraments. We ask your forgiveness for the times we've taken these moments for granted. But now with renewed awareness, come back to you with all our hearts when we receive your sacraments, some of which are repeatable, some of which are irrepeat, uh, and are only once off, unique. We thank you that the church has given birth to these sacraments over the centuries. We thank you, Lord, that they remind us that you are always with us. Let's pray together the prayer Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Put down on, on earth our cities in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. And finally now, just before we finish, hand on the heart again, and let's say our special prayer. Jesus is in us and with us. Again. Again. A little bit louder. Again, silently, again, be still and silent. Please pray for me sometimes. God bless you. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Stand up. The Lord be with you and near you. Amen. Amen. May he let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. May he fill you with healing peace. Amen. 
May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Alleluia. 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 I love you with the love of Jesus.